So verification of residue can be a very common practice in multi-product manufacturing facility. And sometimes the measurement of this residue can be a big challenge in case if the detector responds to the analyte is poor. So what to do if the residue at limit level is not measurable or quantifiable, it is going to be the part of today's discussion. So let us first understand what is meant by the residue. So residue is not only about the active drug substance, but it can also include the excipient, your processing aids, cleaning agents, bio burden, degradants, and sometimes even endotoxin in case of the sterile product. So what we can do in case if the residue is not getting quantified at the limit level. The very first point, if it is possible, you can have the dedicated equipment to produce the product under the discussion. So what happens if you use the dedicated equipment to produce that particular product? Because in that case, you need not to verify or quantify the content of the residue left over the equipment after the cleaning cycle because there is no as such a bigger risk out of the carryover as the api is going to remain the same but having said that you need to validate this cleaning process because there can be chance of degradants generating over a period of time and that accumulation can be a threat so to understand this process, you have to validate the uh, cleaning process as well as the, the verification even if it is not necessary, you have to visually inspect the uh, equipment once the cleaning is done. So this is the ideal situation where if it is possible, the dedicated equipment can be used. But in case if you are not uh, allowed or it is not possible to use the dedicated equipment, Still, there are few important points that we are going to discuss in today's discussion. You can also raise the, the minimum batch size to TDD of the next product ratio to increase the residue limit of the previous product. See, now there is a limitation on what our uh, measurement capabilities. The response is very, very poor at certain given residue limit. Is it possible to increase the residue limit? Let us understand how it is possible. And uh, to understand this part, let us first take the equation by which the, the maximum allowable carryover of the residue is measured. And you will find the calculation formula over here now. The health base exposure limit of the previous product, then MBS, the minimum batch size of the next product, then there is a purging factor, and then there is a therapeutic daily dose of the next product and then there is a safety factor. So I have a question for you. When this maximum allowable carryover, which is the, the limit for the residue content, will be high, will be more, in case if the minimum batch size of the next product is more, in case if the therapeutic daily dose of the next product is low. So in case if I can able to have the, the maximum ratio possible for MBS next divided by TDD next, I can understand that the macro value is going to be on the higher side. Let us take one example to understand this uh, particular concept. And here is the example one onto your screen. So this is the hypothetical case. And in this example, I have taken uh, the health base exposure limit of the previous product as 10 milligram, the minimum batch size of the next product as 10,000 milligram, then the therapeutic daily dose of the next product as 100 milligram. I have considered purging factor as 1 and safety factor as 1000. And then if I substitute these details into the calculation formula, I will come to know that the macro for this uh, particular composition, you know, is going to be 1 mg. Let me further calculate the ratio for what MBS next to TDD next. And you will find that it is just 100. Let us take me the another example, you know, it's again the same product. But in this case, instead of 10,000 milligram, I have increased the batch size of the next product to 1 lakh milligram. And uh, then I will find that the, the minimum batch size to TDD 
ratio is become now 1000 it was earlier 100 it has become 1000 now but the very important point you will notice that the macro has got increased to 10 mg so from 1 mg i got the macro value as now the 10 mg the macro value got increased by 10 times so in case if uh, there is no response uh, available at 1 mg for the the technique i am using for quantification of this particular substance there may be a great chance that i may get a suitable response which is quantifiable at uh, 10 milligram level this is the one way to increase the the response of your uh, analyte by increasing the by increasing the limit for the residue we increase the macro value from 1 mg to 2 m 10 mg and you know how you uh, done that let me introduce uh, myself to all of you and uh, if you do not know my name is Bhaskar Napte and I have more than 20 years of experience into the pharma industry I worked at uh, top pharmaceutical companies like Dr. Reddy's, Apotex, US Vitamin, Glenmark I am the founder of Pharma Growth Hub and this is the platform which helps pharma professionals to boost their career growth by providing absolute clarity on various topics and also by creating an ecosystem where professional network helps to each other to identify new untapped opportunities. There is an opportunity for you to become the lifetime member of this pharma growth hub platform and this is going to be with the never before offer. So please check the description or please check the details given in the description and take the action and join the pharma growth hub today let us now consider the another way and this is by using a larger sample area let us say you are using a swap technique to take the leftover residue from the equipment surface and uh, let us take the example now or before i move on to the example let me show you how the limit per swap in terms of let us say microgram is calculated so you need to have the macro value uh, multiplied by swap area and then divided by the total equipment area having said this calculation formula let us take one example over here now let us assume that the macro for your product is 10,000 microgram then the swapped area is uh, one decimeter square one decimeter square 1 decimeter square is nothing but 10 by 10 centimeter square but I have taken the decimeter square as a unit so it becomes 1 decimeter square then the total surface area assumed to be 1000 decimeter square and then I found that the limit per swab is 10 microgram per swab right and let us take the second example now where I increase the swab area because if I increase the swab area it is into the numerator and certainly the limit of the swap will get increased so instead of one decimeter square now i have decided to swap the five decimeter square surface area and that has resulted into increase to increase in the limit to 50 microgram per swap from 10 microgram to 50 microgram so you may have a good response at the 50 microgram analyte concentration so this is another way you can certainly increase the concentration of your analyte by increasing the surface area of the swabbing okay let us understand the another way out and here is a extract the swab with the smaller amount of solvent so how this is helpful let us understand so once you swab the surface you are going to collect the the residue present onto the swab into a suitable container let us say in a 10 ml or 20 ml volumetric flask or just a pipette not pipette sorry but a test tube and once you put it into the test tube then you are going to dilute that particular swab uh, sample to a certain volume so the lower is the volume used the greater is the concentration of the solution how let us look at the screen so limit in extracted solvent in terms of maybe microgram per gram or microgram per ml or ppm is going to be what macro into swapped area divided by total equipment area divided by extraction solvent amount so by looking at the calculation formula you can easily understand that you know the lower is the solvent amount used for the extraction the greater is going to be the limit 
or the higher is the extraction solvent amount the lower is going to be the limit so with this calculation formula now let us take one example so in this example maco is considered to be 10000 microgram swab area is uh, 1 decimeter square total surface area of all equipment train is let us say 10000 decimeter square and extraction solvent amount is 100 ml so once you swap the surface, you are going to dilute that particular swap sample to a 100 ml. And then you will find that the limit is going to become now 0 0.01 microgram per ml. So this is first example. Let us now take the second example again with the same details, but only with the change in the solvent used for the extraction. So instead of 100 ml, now I am going to use 10 ml. So how much is the limit? in terms of the extracted solvent is become 0.1 microgram per ml. So maybe probably I may get the appropriate response at 0.1 microgram per ml and that way I can you know come out of this challenge where the residue at the limit level was not measurable. Then uh, uh, they concentrate the rinse sample by techniques such as vacuum evaporation. You can further reduce the volumes so that the concentration of the analyte can get increased and the evaporation technique like uh, rota evaporator can be used to, to do this process or if not rota evaporator you can have the another suitable drying processes to be used then the next important technique is uh, low rinse volume for rinsing sampling so in case if you have the rinsing sampling as your uh, technique to sample then you can use the low rinse volume so that you can have the highest concentration into the analyte and that way you may get the appropriate response. So this is a calculation formula to define the limit for the rinse uh, technique. So rinse limit is in terms of macro divided by amount of rinse volume used. Let us take the example again. It's a very simple but let me explain you with the help of example. Let us assume that the macro is 100 microgram, rinse volume used is 10 liter and you will find that the rinse limit is now 10 microgram per ml. But in case if the response is not adequate at this 10 microgram per ml, and let us say now you have uh, uh, you know changed your rinse volume to 1 liter and you found that the rinse limit is 100 microgram per ml and probably you found a suitable or adequate response to this 100 microgram per ml analyte concentration. So this is the way I think you can certainly uh, modify the concentration, modify the limit for your sub limit and that way you will get the appropriate or measurable quantifiable response to the analyte. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will meet you soon with such kind of useful videos. Bye bye.